Eric Darling here with Darling Data on my 10th take at starting this thing. <laughs> uh, usually recording these videos in the morning is against my religion because I am not suitably or favorably, favorably dispositioned to uh, uh, be presentable for uh, this sort of work before like 3 p.m. So uh, this video is about how uh, if sort of like loops and transactions and the transaction log in SQL Server and how you can use transactions in loops to be more favorable to the transaction log and speed those loops up considerably. So, uh, <clears throat> well, I don't often recommend looping code. Uh, sometimes it is unavoidable and uh, you've got to do it because it's unavoidable and uh, the two are synonymous. So uh, what we're going to do is look at three different options you have for writing to or doing modifications in a loop. This was select queries. We wouldn't care because select queries don't do anything to the transaction log, and this would have no impact. It would just be about tuning the select queries in a loop, you know, tune your cursor queries or whatever. So uh, yeah, we have three options here, and we're going to look at the first one, which is allowing SQL Server to behave as it normally does and use implicit, well, I mean, like automatic trans. It's not implicit transactions, it's automatic transactions. Uh, implicit transactions are a completely different thing, but implicitly, each one of these things is a transaction, right? So this insert is a transaction, this update is a transaction, this delete is a transaction. And what we're going to do is highlight this and go over to this window, this tab, tabulature and uh, we're going to use a newer addition to SP pressure detector that allows you to sample a server for a number of seconds uh, and look at what happened in that number of seconds so I'm going to kick this off and I'm going to run this and if this uh, this demo lives up to uh, prior executions it should finish in about seven or eight seconds look at seven seconds look at that professional presenter even at whatever time it is in the morning uh, Nailed it, right? Not like I didn't just run through this or anything. So looking at uh, SP pressure detectors results, uh, the stuff that I want to focus on is first up here. So this second line is going to be writes to the transaction log for uh, our database. Uh, that looks a bit stranger <laughs> now that I see it on this. Now that I'm actually paying attention and seeing it on the screen, but if we look over here for that second line, uh, we wrote about 235 megs to the transaction log over 60,000 total writes. And that is backed up uh, in, you know, mostly, like mostly, you know, correct numbers uh, if we look at perfmon counters as well, where, uh, let's frame this up a little bit more nicely. Uh, if we look at log bytes flushed, uh, there were 247 million total, or about 24 million a second. And if we look at the log flushes, uh, we'll have about 60,000 uh, 60, total flushes, or about 6,000 flushes per second. And that lines up pretty well with, the, so like the two, 247 million bytes is probably pretty close to 235 megs, and 60,000 uh, log flushes is you know, pretty close to 60,000 total writes to the transaction log. So uh, that's, that might be fine. Right? You, you might be doing this at a time when it doesn't matter if your loop runs for seven seconds. It just might not be a big deal. And that's okay. But if you're like me and you often need to tune processes like this, you might be looking at other ways to, make, to improve upon this. One way you can do that is by wrapping all three of the modifications into an explicit transaction. So we have up here we have a begin train and down here we have a commit so rather than having each transaction each insert update delete auto commit when uh when they run we're going to make them commit as a group when each loop fin or when each thing finishes so let's highlight this code and let's come over here and kick off sp pressure detector and let's come back over here and run oh not you run this and this should finish in about between two and four seconds. We got two seconds on that one. Uh, things th seem to be finishing on the low end when I, when I run them here. 
And what we're going to see is uh, that we cut everything down to about a third of what it was before. So coming up here and looking at the total megs written, that's uh, just about 80, which is just about 30% of 250, whatever it was before. And the total write count is about 20,000, which is about 30% of the 60,000 that it was before. Something like that. 20, 40, 30, 33 and a third. 20, 40, 60, 33, something, 33 point infinite threes. And if we look down in the uh, Perfmon stats section at the same counters that we looked at before, uh, if you look at log flush bytes, uh, it's about 1.6 bajillion. <laughs> and uh, really what we're looking at over here is the uh, total difference, which is about 83 million uh, and uh, about 8.3 million a second, right? So that's all coming down by about 30%. And the same thing we're going to see here for the uh, log flushes a second, where that's at about 20,000 total and about 2,000 per second. So before this was 60,000 and 6,000, before this was, you know, 240 whatever bajillion. Uh, so that's one way of doing it. One way that I've found of making this even better is by not making every single loop through a transaction that commits, but uh, conditionally committing the transactions based on something. Right? And in this case, excuse me, the something that I'm using, it looks like this. So we have, at the very top, we have a begin transaction. And at the very bottom, we have a commit transaction. But in the middle, uh, every time... Get in there. Every time uh, the ID value is modulus by a thousand and equal to zero, so basically every thousand loops through, we're going to commit the transaction and begin a new transaction. All right. So it's very important that you do this, and it's very important that you do this and this. All right. Cool. So let's get this highlighted. A little bit more ver verbosity to the code. Uh, let's start this running and now let's run this. And that didn't take two seconds, that took no seconds. That was very fast, right? Uh, pretty good, uh, I think, anyway, uh, at least if you're into that sort of thing. And if we look at what happened uh, in re with regards to Perfmon, uh, we wrote a total of 10 megs the transaction log over 180 writes sorry that's a little cut off over there and if we look down at the perfmon counters and let's frame this up a little bit more nicely uh we have for log flushed bytes a second uh we, we are down to 10 million there or 1 million a second and if we look at the log flushes a second uh for our database we are down to uh 180 or about 18 per second. So uh, that lines up the 180 there, lines up with the 180 there, and the 10 megs there lines up with the total difference there. So uh, everything kind of agrees that SQL Server writes to the log more efficiently uh, in when you, you know, A, like don't use like the auto commit transactions if you're doing multiple uh, modifications in a loop. And if you do an explicit transaction that encompasses all of the modifications in the loop, you'll do better. And then if you change your code a little bit so that you control exactly the sort of cadence of commits to the transaction log, you can do even better. Um, again, this is kind of a rare thing, um, but I do see it often enough that I, found, I find this to be a useful tactic to speed things up. So if you're ever looking at code that's running in a loop, whether it's a cursor or a while loop or any other sort of construct that might loop over things, and you're like, <clears throat> there are just not enough hours remaining in my life for me to write this as a set-based solution, you might consider using one of these techniques, either wrapping all of the modifications into a single transaction or controlling the cadence of uh, transaction commits and begins and stuff to speed that up. Uh, an admittedly quick video this morning because uh, I have stuff to do soon.
and uh, I got to do those things. So, uh, thank you for watching. I hope you learned something. I hope you enjoyed yourselves. Uh, if you like this video, even early in the morning, I am clearly a bleary-eyed individual, uh, thumbs up is a good way to say thank you. Uh, leaving a comment that says thank you is even more verbosity. Uh, and of course, if you like this sort of SQL Server performance tuning training content, you should subscribe to my channel so that you get notified every single time I post one of these whiz-bang things. And I promise you that most of them will not be in the morning. I prefer, prefer to work in the dark or something. Uh, anyway, uh, thank you for watching. Uh, I need to leave. Goodbye.